Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 28th of August 2021 and we're publishing our gold and silver weekly update for the week ending the 27th of August. And boy was yesterday an exciting day. So let's take a look. Gold rose $36 last week, rising from 1782 to 1818. Having hit a high of 1819, so it closed just off its week high, and a low of 1776, a rise of 2%. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,321, that's up £14. And in euros, it closed at €1,541. That's up 18 euros. Silver rose 98 cents from 2305 to 2403, having hit a high of 2414 and a low of 2299, a rise of 4.25%, double that of gold at last. In sterling terms, silver closed at 1749, up 58 pence on the week, and in euros it closed at 20.39 euros. That's up 0.69 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell from 77.3 to 1 to 75.6 to 1. Bitcoin is up just $130 on the week, although it's been much lower and higher, and stands at $48,987. Going over to equities, which it has been a very positive week, particularly towards the latter end. The Dow Jones closed on Friday at 35,455 points, up 242 on the day and up 335 points on the week. The S&P 500 closed at 4,509, up 39 points on the day and up 68 points on the week. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 15,129, up 183 points on the day and up 415 points on the week. During the course of the week, both the S&P 500 and NASDAQ have reached all-time highs, whereas the Dow Jones has just failed to do so. Oils, Brent crude, closed at 72.70, up a breathtaking $7.52 on the week. We've said the market wants to try, or the market manipulators want to try and keep gold in that $70 bracket. They would love to have $80 bracket. We think it should be worth 50 it could theoretically be worth 20 if only Saudi Arabia produced the oil because they're digging it out at less than $10 a barrel. However, this is the price we pay. So, we have Brent crude at 72.70 and WTI crude closed at 68.74, up $6.60 on the week. The dollar index, which until Friday was running strong, stands at 92.68, that's down 0.81 points on the week. Now, we concluded last week's video with the following forecast. So next week, we expect to see gold trading between 1725 and 1850, with 1675 and 1875 as outliers. Broadly in line with the previous week, though we are raising the bar slightly to allow gold to try and reach and exceed that $1,800 level. We can see a trading range for silver between 22.25 and 23.75 with 21.75 to 24.50 as outliers, unquote. Well, last week we emphasized that gold traded within one of the tightest ranges we've seen for a while, just $24. Well, this past week until Friday, that range was only a little greater at $33. However, for reasons we will come to in a moment, Gold surged on Friday, and as a result, the difference between the week's high of 1819 and low of 1776 is a more respectable $43. Still relatively small, but in terms of gold, quite reasonable. In spite of Friday's rise, gold traded well within our normal predictive trading range, almost in exactly dead center, in fact, whereas silver, of course, moved into our outlier range towards the top end although for most of the week stayed within our normal trading range. Silver, up until Friday, traded within a range of 92 cents, but Friday's rise increased the trend, enabling silver's difference between a high of 24.14 and 
and a low of 22.99 to reach $1.15. Now it's interesting because for many, many weeks, silver has broadly, with very few exceptions, traded within a range of around a dollar. In fact, it's becoming quite humorous and annoying at the same time. Now each morning we've produced daily updates expressing the reasons for the various price movements and since our update last week, and we even mentioned it the week before, we said watch for Friday. Lots of data plus Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole Symposium speech. It was this that moved markets, enabling gold, silver, equities and the crypto markets all to move in a positive upward direction. Now what we'd like to do here is quote Gary Wagner a chartist for whom we have quite a bit of respect. We don't always agree with him, but we cannot really fault his chartism. And he encapsulates what happened very nicely. Quote, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell spoke virtually at the Economic Symposium, a yearly event hosted by the Kansas City Fed. Traders and market participants have awaited his speech to glean more insight into the current sentiment of the Federal Reserve as it pertains to their highly accommodative monetary policy. The tone of his prepared remarks was construed as being more dovish than last month's FOMC meeting. Towards the end of his prepared speech, Chairman Powell said, That brings me to a concluding word on the path ahead for monetary policy. The committee remains steadfast in our oft-expressed commitment to support the economy for as long as is needed to achieve a full recovery. The changes we made last year to our statement on longer-run goals and monetary policy strategy are well suited to address today's challenges. The net effect on US equities and the precious metals was strong upward moves in both asset classes. Powell's words contained the right tone and timber to satisfy investors and market participants. There were two main takeaways to Chairman Powell's speech today. The first, the Federal Reserve still considers recent spikes in inflation for the large part as transitory. The second major takeaway was that although he said that they are not far from tapering their 120 billion monthly asset purchases, he made a big distinction between the beginning of tapering and a timeline for the onset of interest rate hikes. His speech cleared the way for both gold and silver prices to have substantial gains over the upcoming weeks. The next major data set that market participants will focus upon will be the US Labor Department jobs report for the month of August. This will be the key report that Federal Reserve members will look at when they convene at the September FOMC meeting." Unquote. That nicely encapsulated what happened with regard to Fed Chair Jerome Powell at Jackson Hole. Yes, we have this coming week, which we'll touch on in a second. We have very important non-farm payroll data, which of course will be the latest data, as well as the weekly jobless claims that the Fed will rely on at the end of September. So we agree with him. The tailwinds for gold especially, and silver, if the economy also improves, are strong. And the headwinds really remain now, if there's any strength left in the dollar, relatively small. But we cannot rule out the fact that the dollar, even though inherently may not be strong, it can potentially be strong because other currencies could become extremely weak in comparison. We do not live in an isolated bubble. So the bullish aspect for gold short term are based around Fibonacci levels. We have 1812, that's not the overture, it's $1812, 1828 and 1839. Should this level be broken, there will be attempts to head towards 1910, but that may take a little while yet. The bearish aspect, should the dollar strengthen and momentum be lost, could cause gold to retrace to 1800 and then 1795. The ultimate and hard support level, and one we've quoted previously for gold, is 1680. Though frankly, we do not see it dipping to that level. The technicals for silver are resistance at 2442 and very strong resistance at the 
200 day moving average at 25.85. There is support at the 10 day moving average at 23.61 and the August lows of 22.10, which we stated last week. The MACD for silver, interestingly, is suggesting a buy signal. Now, we must not get too carried away, as the pumpers have already come out in force telling us that both gold and silver are now on the way to the moon. Well, perhaps if Elon takes another trip and carries some gold and silver with him, it might. You see, whilst there are strong bullish tendencies, and we admit they exist, the US does not operate in a vacuum. The US dollar value is imperative. And as mentioned earlier, it's not just how strong or weak the dollar is domestically, but how it compares with other currencies, which could prove even weaker. We've no doubt that the European Central Bank will be elongating its QE, while perhaps, while perhaps, the Fed may cut back on its bond buying program. So let's remain at this stage cautiously optimistic, though in fairness, we are more bullish now than we have been for a while. Now, economic data last week, which we covered in the daily videos, revealed poor flash PMIs for manufacturing and services for August, strong new home sales for July, slightly worse than expected weekly jobless claims, lower but equal to market expectations on consumer spending and the course PCE price index, and a considerably higher rate for personal income for July, up 1.1% compared with 0.2% in June. Now, this coming week, and we cannot overemphasize the importance of this coming week, we have the following economic reports coming out. We'll read them quickly because this video is getting long. Monday, pending home sales for July. Tuesday, Case Shiller Home Price Index for June. Chicago PMI for August and the Consumer Confidence Index for August. Wednesday, all for August, ADP Employment Report. Market Manufacturing PMI, ISM Manufacturing Index, and Motor Vehicle Sales. Crucial day. We also have construction spending for July. Thursday, weekly jobless claims, trade balance for July, and factory orders for July. Friday, the most crucial day of the week, with Wednesday being the second most. Non-farm payrolls for August, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, all for August, plus the Market Services PMI Final and the ISM Services Index for August. So it's a super important week for economic data with the latter part of the week from Wednesday onwards, culminating in Friday's non-farm payrolls being the most important to observe. That is where we could potentially see a major move in the dollar and gold and silver prices, providing the data that's produced is either far below or far above expectations. So where do we see gold and silver prices moving next week? Well, again, we're caught between whether we're going to see more hospitalizations due to the Delta variant and further restrictions in trade as a result, and perhaps more pertinent in terms of the effect whether the dollar will hold its current value or continue to fall back. There will definitely be positive sentiment for gold as a result of weekend reporting and gold closing so close to its high. But we in the UK do have a bank holiday on Monday, so our London trade will be restricted. So next week, we expect to see gold trading between 1750 and 1875, with 1700 to 1900 as outliers. So we've raised the bar a little. We can see silver trading between 23 and 25, with 22.10 and 25.80 as outliers. And we're not counting out those outliers as not likely to be entered into. Politically, we have Afghanistan, spread of COVID Delta variant, and the House passing its multi-trillion dollar package, all significant and once finally signed, will, in our view, act as a final tailwind for equities and precious metals. And then perhaps the party, certainly for equities, could be over for a while. What do you think? Do share your thoughts. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. Thank you for listening. Have a great weekend. Have a prosperous week ahead. And stay 
safe. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.